Guys, have you ever forgotten that you are drip acclimating? I have, I've done it lots and lots of times. Sometimes I've, I've went to the extreme where I've forgotten so much as the next day and half the tank is empty and blah, 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 right? So I have found a solution for it. This is something I've been using for quite a long time and I thought I would share it with you guys today, right? And so what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to make our own drip acclimation set up, right, with a float valve, right? And if you have set this up properly, you never have to worry about your water overflowing again, right? Because as I said, we're going to use a float valve. I have loads of these in my shrimp room doing different things like uh, automatically topping up the tanks and whatever else. And I thought, yeah, th this is an awesome way to make sure that your tanks don't overflow. Your, your water buckets that have the shrimp, shrimp in them, they don't overflow, right? So to make this, guys, it's super simple. What you'll need is a small clamp like this, right? Because this is what's going to hang your uh, cable onto the tank. You're going to need a couple of these little connectors like this. You're going to need an air stone. This one's quite important because it stops shrimp climbing into the tube. And you're going to need airline tubing. I like the four to five mil stuff that's a little bit thicker. And you're going to need a little control switch like this. This will let you adjust your water speed so to allow it to drip. And you're going to need a couple of little bits of RO tubing like this, right? So let's build this together and uh, I'll have another one because I already have a few of them. But it's always good to have more than one, right? So as I said, what you'll need is a clamp like this. Let's do this first. For this, guys, this type of clamp, right? You will get them at many, many different types of hardware stores. Uh, for me specifically, the hole in this one is too small for, for our tubing to go through, right? So let's drill this out. We have a little four and a half mil drill piece here. I'm just going to shove it through the hole, guys, and drill like this. There you go. Right, and if you want to, guys, you can do both sides. It's up to you. I like to do both sides because sometimes you get airline tubing that isn't exactly made perfectly and it doesn't hold its own weight and it wants to bend. So it's always better, I think, to do both sides, right? So drill this one out as well, like so. Right, and if you have time, you can cut all these burrs off with a knife. This one's good to go, right? So next, guys, what you want to do is you want to go to your tank that is the highest off the ground. For this example, I'm just going to use a short piece like this. But in general, what you do is you'd go and get a, a piece of um, hosing that could reach the highest tank in your room to the floor, right? So we're going to use this piece. That is what this is for. And we're going to use a separate piece to go from our little contraption here to our next. But this will all make sense in a second, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add our air stone. This is the part that's going to go into the tank like this. And then this end here, guys, will go through our little clamp, right? So if you can't fit this through first time, what you can do, guys, is you can cut it to a point and thread it through. We might have to do this. This little bit here, you want to cut it to a point like this. And this is the part, guys, that's going to go through one side of your little thing like this. You see it? Now, depending on how well your holes will drilled, were drilled, will depend on if you need this next part, right? So this, you see this is a little bit loose. This is the way I like to do it in my tanks because then I can drop this part all the way to the bottom. Right, but you want to stop this part coming all the way back through, right? So this is where you must add a little connector. I found that adding a connector widens the tubing enough like this that it stops it being able to be pulled back through the clamp like this, right? So you go like this, you see? Right, so this is the part with the air stone. You thread it on like this. Right, and this is the part, guys, that will go into your tank. Right, and this is the part that will go on the outside of your tank to your valve. Right, so let's do that part next. On one end, we're going to add our little valve like this, our little connector, I should say, not valve. Like this, right? And this is going to be the part that we make into our RO tubing that's going to connect to our float valve, right? So you'll need a piece of RO tubing like this. Guys, I'll leave a link for all this stuff in the description as well, or in the first comment, actually. And what you need to do here, guys, is your little connector, it doesn't really fit, but you want it to be like this, right? You want it to be like this to the point where you fold over your pipe like this, 
and you're going to force this in with as much pressure as you can physically manage, right? And this ensures that it's a super tight fit like this, right? This is really, really hard to come off. Right, and then you want to go to your little valve and just make sure it's actually in the orientation where um, it comes backwards to open and forwards to close because, yeah, I've, I've done this in a few myself where I've done it wrong, it's just awkward. You're going to put it in like this, push it in until it locks, right, and the way this works, guys, is it can't go back on itself until you push that little part in, right, so you're not going to push it back in, make sure it's in all the way, and there you go, look at this. Next, guys, you're going to need a little piece that will mate into your float valve. And so that is the piece that's going to be our connector to the float valve. And it simply joins on like this. Push that in. And that is it. This is it already set up to go right in. What I would recommend, guys, is this part here is fully adjustable, this little part here. What I recommend you do right is there's a little arrow that indicates like it's halfway or almost straight like this. And this will give you the lowest water line possible for your container. Let me give you an example. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's show you how this works. Imagine the scenario where you've bought shrimp and you've just unboxed them, or you're moving shrimp from tank to tank. You put the shrimp into the container, into your bucket, and you're going to drip the water in from the tank that they're going to be in, right? So your little device that you made like this, just say my shrimp are going to go into this tank as an example. Put the air stone in and you clamp it on to the tank, like so. Right, and then on this end here, hope you can see that, you can take the little connector off, like this. You see, you take it off and you can start the siphon, guys. So you just must suck on this. And it's a good idea to have this set up um, over the actual bucket itself so you don't spill water all over the place. Okay, so suck on it and you can wait until it comes out or you can just, just put it on straight away like this. Make sure it's on well and then on the inside you can see here it's actually dripping in right and then you use this little control flow control thing here and you only want one or two drips a second, right? So I'm going to grab the camera and I'm going to show you a close-up of this as well, just so you get it in your head ingrained so you're able to go away and buy this stuff and do it for yourself. Because this is awesome, guys. I no longer have to worry about drip acclimating shrimp. I can put them in here, go and do my thing. If I forget about it, come back the next day. Shrimp are good to go. They've been in this water. You maybe have to put some of the water back into the tank, but that's it. Here's stone, tubing. A little clamp, you can see how this works. Goes down our airline, back into our container. There's a little connector, our adjuster, and hopefully you can see that, guys, how fast that, that drips. It's just one or two drips a second, and this is perfect, right? So, once you imagine if the water's already in here, this starts to rise up like this, it eventually just stops, you see. Lower it, it should start again, you see it? So that is how I do it guys. So hopefully this video has been useful for some of you. Like and subscribe the usual and I'll see you in the next one. Happy Shrimp Game guys.